Engineering Physics 2 class. Welcome to my late night stream with Dr. Neutron. Tonight we're going to be talking about Chapter 21 lecture notes, and we're going to be doing a couple problems by popular request. So, let's get right to it. As for the lecture notes, starting Chapter 21, Coulomb's Law. We need to distinguish between being electrically neutral, negatively charged, and positively charged, and identify excess charge. Okay. Well, let's take, for example, hydrogen. The simplest case for my hydrogen atom, I have one proton and one electron. Protons are always positively charged, electrons are negatively charged okay so my electron is orbiting the proton or buzzing around it in some way but this is electrically neutral okay? because i have the same number of electrons as i do protons if i were to remove this then it would not be electrically neutral anymore i'd have my proton it would be positively charged just like if i had a free electron floating in space, it would be uh, electrically neutral. This couldn't survive very long though, uh, because electrons would react with other things. But for what we're dealing with right now, we're gonna be worried about protons and electrons. Protons are always positively charged, electrons are negatively charged. If we had a copper atom, that atom has 29 protons, and if it's electrically neutral, it has 29 electrons, okay? If I take one of those away, then it has a po positive charge of plus one, okay? And in a giant solid, like copper, in a copper crystal, the valence electron, the most outer one, is free to move between all of these copper atoms. They call it the sea of electrons, and it's electrically conductive. For something to be a conductor, that means that it can share electrons. The electrons are weakly held around the uh, nucleus, not very strongly. So between distinguish between conductors, non-conductors, insulators, semiconductors, and superconductors. Whoa, that's a <clears throat> that's a hefty goal. Well, you probably know what uh, an insulator is. Insulator is a piece of plastic or something that does not conduct electricity. If you have a piece of copper or a piece of metal, and my piece of metal here, the outside of this, and my uh, electric force or potentiometer, uh, the inside metal is uh, connected to this middle part. So electrons can flow freely through this metal, they can move around. The charge can redistribute itself uh, as it needs to. Semiconductors, we use those in all of our modern computers. Uh, They're the basis of our technology. That means we can turn on the uh, we can turn on the conductor uh, by applying a, a voltage. That makes a semiconductor conducting. So a current can pass through. If we turn off that voltage, it's resistive. So it's a switch. That's what gives us ones and zeros in our computer. And they put millions and millions of those on the Pentium processors. Your iPhone is an amazing supercomputer. Okay. So describe properties inside an atom. Okay. Well, inside of the atom, we've got... Um, we have electrons and protons. So there's very high electric fields inside of here. We've got 29 electrons, 29 protons. Big electric fields, but if you go outside of this electron cloud, there's different shells, then you really don't feel an, uh, an electric field. The electrons screen uh, the protons positive charge, and so if you're outside, it appears electrically neutral. I identify conduction electrons, explain their role in making a conducting object 
negative or positively charged, well, if it's a conductor, as we mentioned, electrons are free to move around. Uh, they're not localized to one atom, uh, and it is free to conduct. Now, a superconductor, a superconductor would be a metal with no resistivity. That means if you applied a current and a loop, it would flow forever. Superconductors are one possibility of building a quantum computer. I use them in my lab all the time. Uh, I design superconducting circuits. That's the core, the basis of my research. Identify what is meant by electrically isolated uh, and grounding. Let's look at this piece of metal here. Uh, the middle part is uh, isolated because I've got this big uh, insulator up here. It's electrically isolated. So the inside of here is not connected to the outside. Okay? So when I get my, uh, when I get this thing charged up, <clears throat> and I've got my, my cat here. <laughs> Let's do an experiment. <laughs> So this cat's actually alive. <laughs> Say hello, Zeus. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get Zeus. We're gonna charge it up on Zeus. Let's see if it works. Does it work? No, Zeus, hold still. I gotta get this charged up. Oh, it works. Yes. <laughs> I actually used my cat, and I did it. Wow, Zeus. I just whoa. look at that. The static electricity for my cat. Zeus is okay. No Zeus's were harmed in the making of this video. He just thought I was like petting him in a weird way. But apparently, you can use a living cat. I've, heard, I've taken energy from a living cat. Yes, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Neutron has done it. <laughs> I'm going to steal the energy for myself. <laughs> I've taken your energy, Zeus. <laughs> John does not approve of this silliness. All right, moving on. <clears throat> yes. Explain how a charged object can set up an induced charge on a second object. That's what we're gonna do right here. Okay. So if I, <clears throat> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna charge it. Of course, this. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna use my, my dead cat here. Oh God. Again, I, I this was not for me. I didn't do this. Somebody gave it to me. I don't I don't know where it came from. Honestly, no idea. Okay, so uh, I think people used to be into fur. I don't I don't know. I don't, don't want to know where it came from. So I've set up a charge on this plastic rod. It is an insulator. When I apply here, you see the needle. So I've, I'm holding it above there. I can touch it on there, and then I transfer. No, oh, I didn't. There we go. Ha! That's where the electrons were. See, on this, once you put the electrons on here by rubbing it, they're stuck in that one specific place. They can't move around. This thing is the conductor. So imagine electrons after electrons are just stuck to the outside there, statically uh, stuck to the outside. So when you put them on your hand, your hand is a uh, <clears throat> conductor. Okay, so explain how a charged object can set up an induced charge on a second object. Not right now, but <clears throat> I get this set up here. I rub my cat skin here. Okay, this first object Okay. I'm setting up an induced charge on the first one. There are charges on this plastic rod, and what happens is the negative charges up here create an electric field. They push the electrons down into this part. So you got to imagine this little thing here becomes negatively charged. There's negatively charges over here on the needle, and there's also negative charges over here. So those negative charges are uh, very... Uh, they repel each other. If they set up an electric field, they push against each other. If I stick it on there, then I can, 
Yeah. Um, then they stay on there. Okay. So, this is a great example of how you can imagine the coronavirus works. We'll call this the coronavirus <laughs> meeting. <laughs> the coronavirus meter. So, let's do an example. Uh, <laughs> well, this is going to be funny. So, this is, let's imagine that the electrons are viral particles. So, here, now I'm moving too close. Oh, I'm within six feet, okay? Yeah, see, you're too close. This is not social distancing, okay? Now, if you move away, wait, you're lucky. Oh, it's not permanent. We we're coming in contact, okay? But it wasn't permanent. Here's what happens when you go out on the weekends and you go to uh, places where they drink adult beverages. Yeah, see that? Yeah, you're, you're drinking a beverage. Your mask is coming off. You're too close. See that? You're touching. That's too close, okay? And now look at this. You, you've got... You've got the COVID, okay? So, the moral of the story is here, people, okay? Don't go out, okay? See? Because the people with COVID, okay? You want to keep them away. Don't let them get too close. If you feel your COVID meter going up, move away. Back away, okay? See, you can, you can have this on video, okay? See here? We can get these two together on video, okay? And check this out, see? You can be together virtually, okay? This meter and this thing, they can hang out on video chat. Oh, look, they're touching on video chat. See that? Get out of the way here. Oh, look, they're having a Fortnite party. It's so much fun. And look, no one got COVID. <laughs> Stay inside. Stay away from each other. On campus this semester. Okay. Moving on. <clears throat> so, get this out of here. All right. So, for either particles in a pair of charged particles, apply Coulomb's law to relate the magnitude of the electrostatic force the charge magnitudes of the particle and the separation between the particles, okay? So we have, mm, okay, so we talked about this in class, okay? Identify for either charged particle and the Okay, so for either of the particles and a pair of charged particles, use apply Coulomb's law to relate the magnitude, the electrostatic force, the charge magnitudes of the particles, and the separation between the particles. Okay, so this is the equation we talked about in class. F equals Q times Q1 over Q2 R squared. This is the magnitude of my force, the magnitude of the charged particles. We have two charged particles, Q1, Q2. Here's my distance, R, between those two charged particles. If my distance increases, the force goes down, okay? And if it's a neg if this comes out negative, that means it's attractive. If it's positive, that means it's repulsive, okay? That's how you tell, okay? So we're relating the distance to the magnitude of the charges, and uh, if these get farther away, the force decreases. Okay, identify that Coulomb's law applies only to point-like particles and objects that can be treated as particles. Okay, so when you are doing these problems, you need to take into account pairs of particles, okay? Pairs of particles you do all of the particles, the pairs individually, you find their forces, and then you add them all together. We're going to be doing it in Cartesian coordinates for most of the problems. You can do it in radial coordinates, okay, um, or spherical coordinates, whatever coordinate system you want to. 
Uh, Cartesian coordinates are nice in some ways, but they're also uh, a lot more cumbersome and kind of clunky. Okay? Um, spherical coordinates are nice also. Okay? If more than one force acts on a particle, find the net force by adding all the forces as vectors, not scalars. That means you have to take into account the x and y components. Okay? Uh, very important. Add those components together. Separate them out into x, y, and z. Add the components together. Sum up all of your forces. Okay. Identify that a shell of uniform charge attracts or repels a charged particle that is outside the shell as if all the shell's charge were concentrated as a particle in the shell's center. We're going to get to that probably on Monday. I'm going to bring my spherically charged shell home from SLU, and I don't have that with me. We brought my little uh, meter with me, but that's where we're that's where we're headed. Okay, so a couple more points here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna get to these later parts. I'm not gonna talk about those right now. We'll come back to those at the end of the chapter. I need to bring my spherical shell. I've got some other very cool experiments on the show. Can't bring them all home at the same time. So, all right. Let's talk about this experiment. This is a good one. Magic. Two glass rods were each rubbed with a silk cloth and one was suspended by a thread. When they're close to each other, they repel each other. Okay? Okay, and then the second one, the plastic rod was rubbed with fur. When brought close to the glass rod, the rods attract each other. Well, oh, lucky for you, I actually brought... I, I do have this one. All right, so this one, we actually have, okay, a glass rod suspended here from a kite string, right? I'm going to actually attempt to rub it with a, uh, a piece of silk. This guy here, this is my, my glass rod. Right? Get this nice and charged up, okay? And you've got to really rub it. Okay, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna show that. Um, so this one is charged, and then I'm going to, I'm gonna try and do it. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna do this gently. It's tricky, okay? Cause I don't wanna break my string. It took a long time to get it right in the middle. Just so you know, it's been about 20, 25 minutes building this apparatus. Okay, so, don't want to mess up the string. Because it's hard to balance this rod. It's not the same shape. That's fine. It's all for physics. And I love physics. I love experiments. That's why I'm an experimental physicist. It's always fun to play with these things. And I am so lucky. I get to have all these things to play with. Okay, so we're going to get this to equilibrium stop okay i'm not going to go up all right so stop this Ooh, it was sticking in my hand okay yes it was very charged okay see that it actually okay i know that it's charged now okay so i'm going to hold this near there Ooh. Look at that. Yes, it works. Put this one over here. See that? Oh, it's repelling. And then this one's coming over here. Ooh, it's repelling too. Also, see? This is... Oh, almost... Oh, not quite. There we go. So it's repelling it. So it's this one. It's closer. Okay, then... So I'm actually using the force. Okay, so that was... Silk on glass. These are two glass rods, and I'm gonna really try to repel this one. Yes, you can see the effect of the invisible force, so I can push it without touching it. Okay, now let's get my my fur. I'm like, I, I, I could rub it on my cat. It's, oh, sweetie, I'm sorry. 
can and see if it probably well, likes it actually and thinks it's funny. No, I'm just betting. Hey, what, what are you doing to me, weird human? So I wrote this on my actual living cats, okay? So now we're going to, oh, jeez, this is, I can, I can feel the force, but I, I can't, jeez, can, oh my gosh, okay, this is, this is getting a little crazy, whoa, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay, woo, okay, we're gonna try and bring this guy around, oh, jeez, yes, that works, you can actually rub it on a living cat, wow, I think I've, I've done it again, I'm using Thanks for watching, Dr. Wisby. I think we've, we've accomplished a lot here. Charge this rod. I took electrons from my cat. I can... Whoa, it's still attracted. Oh my gosh. Yes, you did that, sis. All right. Thanks for watching, Dr. Thank you, like, and subscribe down below.